Hello YouTube, uh, it's been a little while since I've made a video, uh, several months. Um, I've not been very well, so hence the reason, okay? Now, um, I'm doing a video today of um, my singles here, okay? Uh, I did a, a video several years ago now, okay? So there's going to be some repeats, I'm afraid, because you'll have seen them before, possibly. Uh, there are some new ones in here. There are some truly cheesy ones in here as well. Um, so yeah, I don't normally buy that many singles. Um, I find it irritating, the fact that they only, they're only one song and you have to get up and turn them over to play the B-side. But uh, yeah, uh, this, is, uh, this is what I've got, okay? Right, this is Joe Dolce, um, Shut Up Are You Face. Okay, that's how I transfer on YouTube, actually, I think, somewhere. Um, I did it, I think when I was changing my uh, P5 belts. Um, so yeah, on the blue Epic label. Uh, with the early 80s logo. This, I don't know whether I've even ever played this. This is called My Uncle. Um, I don't even know how I got it, but it's a uh, Fontana label. Yeah. Uh, let's get the vinyl out. There you go. Okay. I like how uh, sleeves in the olden days actually had the little paper sleeves inside them as well. Uh, so yeah, um, this looks like an original, or I don't know very much about Fontana originals, but yeah, uh, don't know what it is and why I've even got it. Certainly don't remember buying it. Right, this is an original copy. Sorry. This is an original first pressing of um, Those Were The Days by Mary Hopkin. Uh, I, you probably can't see it, but if I point my finger down, um, the thing to look out for on um, any EMI records from about 64, I believe, maybe end of 63, uh, up until uh, mid-1969, is that they have this sold in the UK text um, here it says sold in UK subject to resale price conditions see price lists okay I think that meant do not undercut us I think basically that's what that meant but yeah and it's in the original black uh, apple sleeve as well this is an Elton John single um, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Okay, uh, he covered that one. It's on the Rocket label. Okay. Um, this is the Tom Robinson band um, in the wrong sleeve. It's in a Decker sleeve for some reason. Uh, this is called Power in the Darkness. Uh, very, very good single. Love Tom Robinson. This is Japan, Life in Tokyo, on the Hansa label. Yeah. Okay, that's early Japan. Okay, because they uh, signed up with Virgin. Uh, <laughs> cheese, Spitting Image, the Chicken Song. I loved spit. So I loved Spitting Image as a kid, and uh, yeah, and that is on the. Virgin label. Okay, you can just about make out a Virgin sign there. Japan, Ghosts, and this is on the Virgin label. Looks like it needs a jolly good clean actually. Um, the other thing about singles, they tend to be a bit knackered, um, especially if you get them from charity shops. They've been played to death on uh, all sorts of different machines and things. Okay, this is uh, Lloyd Cole and the Commotions from the hit EP. Okay, and it's on the Polydor label. Uh, not quite sure why it's got two sleeves in it, but it has. Okay, um, from the 80s. Uh, yeah, and I think that big 33 there means, funnily enough, 
you have to play it at 33 RPM so we can get these back in there. This is a Gary Newman picture disc, America. No idea what it sounds like, haven't played it. Uh, but yeah, there you go, and there's the other side. This is the Drifters. Now why haven't I, I've never played this one. I forgot I even bought it. This is the Drifters and it's Every Night's a Saturday Night With You on the Bell label. Um, I think that's the A side. Let me see if I can see. Uh, yeah, that's the A side. Every Night's a Saturday Night With You. The B side is called I'll Get to Know Your Name Along the Way. Mm. Yes. Make of that what you will. Tina Turner, what's love got to do with it? Don't rush the good things on the capital label. Silver capital. Uh, the Hep Stars, which were Benny Anderson of Abba's very old band from the uh, mid to late 60s. Uh, very famous in Sweden, a bit like the Beatles in Sweden. This is on a label called Olga Records. Okay, um, B-side is Mashed Potatoes. Okay, and I believe it's a cover version because I don't recognise any of those names there. George Michael with Queen and Lisa Stansfield. Uh, Summer to Love. Uh, Killibur, Papa Was a Rolling Stone. Uh, These Are the Days of Our Lives with Lisa Stansfield and Calling You. There's another single that I don't remember buying. But there we go, and it's on the Parlophone label. Now this would have been 19... I believe that's 1985. I should have my glasses on, but it really is small print there. No, it's 1983. 1983. So let's have a look at a Parlophone label from 1983. Because um, by, I suppose, the late 60s, early 70s, people were customising or bands were customising the, the, um, the, sort of the label, as it were. And this is just a, a, a bog standard one. So it's, sing it's a silver label. It's got the Parlophone pound sign trademark with Parlophone underneath. Um, now, uh, copyright in the sound recording, uh, all of the sort of perimeter text is in the groove where the matrix numbers would be. In fact, it's sort of indented on the record, so it's very nice indeed. And uh, yeah, they started with the all rights of the producer text there. Um, that will come into play soon. Ha 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 On the hands of label here. Japanese Boy by Annika. Haven't played this for yonks, but I loved it when I was a child. Brilliant. This is uh, a single I got at a gig uh, on Sunshine Records called uh, Death March by The Beauty Shop. Lovely single. Knackered actually, I think. That's uh, one of the sad things about buying singles today is that they're already knackered before you even play them. Uh, this is Turn Back the Clock by Johnny H. Jazz on the Virgin label, green, green on one side, red on the other. Ha 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 ha, true cheese. The Bay City Rollers, Shang Alang. And are you ready for that rock and roll? on the Silver Bell label. Lovely single, Mark Arman with Gene Pitney, something's, got on, something's gotten hold of my heart. Uh, another Parlophone, okay, and yeah, this is another early 80s Parlophone. 
Let's just see what year that was. No, sorry, late 80s, 1988 that was. And it's Dick James Music Limited. Golly gosh, talk about keeping it in the family. Okay, okay, and again, the perimeter text starts with all rights of the producer. Okay. Um, <coughs> I think that just might have been a mock-up of the original um, kind of mid-60s parlophone singles. But this is uh, Terence Trent Darby. Okay. Uh, this is If You Let Me Stay. Brilliant, 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 brilliant single. Okay. It's on a sort of yellow ECBS label but that uh, that's basically the colour scheme of the um, of the Introducing the Hardline album. Uh, it's got a groove in the middle, an inner groove like that as well, uh, which is rather good. Okay and the B side of that is Loving You is Another Word for Lonely, which I don't know whether I've ever even played, but certainly if you let me stay I've transferred onto YouTube. Brilliant single. Uh, I Don't Want to Be a Hero, Johnny H. Jazz, again on the Virgin label. Let me get it out. Yeah, I get another red and green one. Right, this is Diana Ross Love Theme from Mahogany. So I do need to actually transfer some of these. Um, and it's on the Tamla Motown label, which uh, were distributed in the UK, at least by EMI. So it's got all of the typical um, EMI sort of hallmarks there, like this big 45 RPM there. Uh, looks like this needs a damn good clean as well. Uh, 1975, okay. And again, Oh no, EMI Records Limited, okay, 1975, okay. So, um, the Parlophone kind of uh, perimeter text in the 60s, uh, no, I'm going to mention that later, okay, when I get to some Beatles singles, because I have got a few in here, not all of them, but I've got a few. <coughs> Nana, 99 Red Balloons. On the uh, sort of blue and yellow epic label. Another brilliant single. Uh, quite why I've got level 42 I don't know but this is The Sun Goes Down, Living It Up. It's quite a good single, quite a good single. Um, haha, another Bay City Rollers here. Oh it's even got a little picture of them in it as well. Wow. Now I have, and it's got the lyrics on the back, okay? I have played this, I've transferred it somewhere, but somehow or other I've lost it, deleted it by accident or something. But yeah, uh, this is Bye Bye Baby and It's For You on the Silver Bell label. All right, this is Pie Records. This is, <laughs> I only got this because it was interesting, okay? But in the... 1970s, 1974 to be precise, so the same year as the original release, this woman called Lena Martell did a cover of Asta Mignana. It is atrocious. It really is atrocious, okay? She sang One Day at a Time um, in the late 70s. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. Um, but yeah, so that was that was her, basically. She sings Hastamanyana. Even Abba, Swedish, could pronounce the Spanish properly. Astamanyana. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's backed with everybody wants to be loved by someone. But yes, uh, nice to have as... Uh, <coughs> A sort of keepsake of the 70s, just not nice to listen to. <laughs> Cheese, 
Star trekking across the universe on the Starship Enterprise under Captain Kirk. This is the firm Star Trekking. Okay. Um, on the B side, there's something called Dub Trek. Dub Trek. Okay. But there you go. 1987. Number one for absolutely thousands of years. Pretty sure it was 1987. Uh, it's on a label called Bark. Never heard of it. Yeah, 1987. Love Comes Quickly by the Pet Shop Boys on the Parlophone label. Okay. And again, look, very, very retro. Very 1960s in terms of the design here. Okay. This has got a plastic sort of, uh, uh, sort of, I don't know, adapter thing in it. Um, they're not very good. Uh, my advice for anybody buying singles is that you can get, very often, get singles that have not just the hole, but the, you know, this, this great big hole here, as it were, but, you know, that we, we, you can get them with like the full inners, as it were, like the whole label. Okay, and much more stable, far less likely to, to drift in speed while they're being played. Okay, and it's also a sign that probably that was in a jukebox somewhere. Which means that it would have been played by a pneumatic drill um, over and over and over again and will be knackered. Okay, thankfully this one isn't too bad. Okay, but I would just try and avoid the singles that need the adapters. Okay, Danny Wilson, Mary's Prayer. Uh, the cover looks very nice as well on Virgin, black label. Okay, please forgive me, I need to make some space. Ha! No, I'll never ever break away from you. No, no, there used to be a chocolate bar called Breakaway. I don't know if they still exist. I haven't seen one for years and years and years and years and years and even years. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, and they used uh, a, a kind of um, mock-up of this single for um, for the advert, basically. It's on Stiff Records. Uh, Stiff Records, I believe, were like Madness, um, Madness, possibly, um, and uh, someone else who I'm trying to think of, Ian Jury and the Blockheads, that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, and it has Dancing in the Dark on the B-side. I've never played it. Perhaps I ought to. There's loads of things here I haven't played. Right. In the days when TV was good, especially Saturday TV for kids. Okay, so we are now talking about my childhood. There used to be a, a sort of whole morning long BBC um, uh, TV series called Swap Shop. Okay, um, you will recognise Noel Edmonds, who was the main presenter, uh, Keith uh, Chegwin Keith there, um, and Maggie Philbin there, basically. They, um, they released this song called I Want to Be a Winner, okay, and the, um, uh, the second uh, swap shop theme, because the first one was... Um, yeah, the, the, it went um, and uh, then they I think for the um, late 70s early 80s they changed it to this theme called um, uh, hello hello um, and uh, yeah they called themselves brown sauce for this uh, for this release here okay and it's on BBC records okay and it really is knackered actually another one that wants to clean. I can see that I've just got to spend some time cleaning my uh, seven inches, if you pardon the expression. Uh, this one really is knackered. This is Bob Marley and the Whalers on the island label, the palm tree island label. And this is uh, Roots Rock Reggae. That's the, the single for that one there. It really is knackered. Another Bob Marley, Exodus, okay, another one with an adapter in it, Prince, Sign of the Times, uh, 
absolutely cream crackered. It's not my single. Uh, this is one I picked up from a charity shop. Um, I used to have this as a kid or as a late teenager, put it that way. Uh, 1987, brilliant song. Uh, this is an edit. Uh, the best version of this is actually on the Sign of the Times album. It's a bit longer and it's very good. ABBA, Fernando and Hey Hey Helen on the B-side in the original yellow epic sleeve on the yellow epic label there. Okay. Not very rare. Um, I went into a second-hand record shop the other day, actually, and just saw tons of these. So, uh, yeah. And they fetch about four pound, five pound each if you go to if you go to a second-hand record shop. If you go to a charity shop, you might find them if you're lucky, um, and you know you'll be able to get them for maybe twenty, thirty p. Um, This is the Atlantic version of Lay Your Love On Me by ABBA. Um, I've got a Rega adapter as well, which I can use to play these. Um, I'm not sure where it is at the moment though. It shows how often I play my singles. I play my albums a lot more, obviously. Obviously. Uh, this is Chiquitita and Love Light. Okay, on the original, again, it's the first pressing on the original Epic label with the original Epic sleeve that it was uh, released on. Uh, this is Another Star and Creeping by Stevie Wonder. Okay, from uh, Another Star is from the Songs in the Key of Life album, which I've done a video on. Knowing Me, Knowing You. Aha, uh -huh. Abba. No, 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 knowing me. No, 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 knowing you. Um, got a few abbas here, let's just take them off. Okay, this is uh, Take a Chance and I'm a Marionette. Again, it looks like an original. Um, first pressing. Okay, just in a generic white sleeve there. Um, the name of the game, and I won the departure. That was the first ABBA single that I bought. Okay, but this is not a copy of that. This is um, this is one I found in a charity shop. But yeah, this was the first ever ABBA single that I bought. Um, this is Money, 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 and Crazy World. Okay. Oh, someone's doing their drum practice. You might be able to hear it. Um, this is Waterloo and Watch Out, and it doesn't have the original sleeve, which is a shame. Okay, but it's the original uh, label. For some reason, it's got some sort of flowery stamp on it. You can see that there. God knows what that is. Maybe someone doodled on it. Probably what it looks like. Okay, this is one of my later purchases. In fact, I bought this the other day. Um, been uh, volunteering in Oxfam, and uh, I found this. And uh, this has had a clean. No, it hasn't. It hasn't had a clean. It doesn't need a clean. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, Don't tell me, Blamange, uh, another group that I got into in the eighties. Um, they're a bit kind of left of field, as it were. This single's a bit knackered, this is what happens to them. Which is why I like the fact that in the 60s they packaged them with paper sleeves on the inside. Uh, the the B-side's a bit weird and odd, it's called Get Out Of That, but uh, it's quite funny. This is Goodness Gracious Me by Peter Sellers and Sophia Loren. Okay, this is an original first pressing, 1960. Okay, um, now the perimeter text on this starts out with the Parlophone Company, okay, um, as did uh, most Parlophone records, in fact all Parlophone records will have done up until about the end of 63, beginning of 64, okay. So the Parlophone Company is what you need to look out for, uh, for all, all of those Beatles singles and Beatles albums if you want the first pressings of them. Okay, um, <clears throat> if they're in good condition, 
has to be said this is in kind of mediocre condition this sleeve is completely split okay it's got a plastic inner um on it to try and protect the record uh, but the, again this is an original sleeve for it um but yeah um if you want those beatles records uh, to be first pressings, you, you'll look out for the Parlophone company on anything up to, I believe, Beatles for Sale. Okay, you need to go to Andy Hall's website, he will tell you. This is a single that I bought not because of Bad Boys Inc because this, the, the actual song is just generic disco pat and it's atrocious, okay? But it's called Whenever You Need Someone, okay? Quite why they got the name Bad Boys Inc., I don't know, because it's just, it really is just pat and they, just, and they sound so kind of, um, I don't know, there, there, there's just something really kind of, <laughs> just cheesy about them. They sound like you know the Osmonds would have sounded if they. I don't know what I don't know what year this was. I know nothing at all about Bad Boys Inc. The only reason is that I saw it in the charity shop where I, where I've been working for a little while over the summer holidays, and uh, it is. It's got a lovely gatefold sleeve there, and <laughs> they really look like bad boys, don't they? Don't take those home to your mother for goodness' sake. Um, yeah, let's see if I can find out what year it is. At least it's got a proper inner sleeve. Uh, it's on the uh, A&M label, Silver A&M. I believe that says 1993. But yeah, hmm. imagine the Osmonds circa 1993. That's what it would be like. Okay. Just basically teen drivel, really. Um, there were some teen bands, I'll, sh I'll tell you about one soon, um, that, you know, actually wrote their songs, didn't, you know, the, that basically is session musicians recording the record and getting four pretty boys to stand in front and mind to it, okay? And there were teen bands, you know, particularly in the 80s and, um, uh, you know, some from the 90s, um, that, that actually didn't, uh, you know, they actually performed their stuff, wrote it and that sort of thing. Because even the Bay City Rollers were basically just, you know, again, a few pretty boys put up, um, uh, you know, to, to mime along basically to um, uh, session musicians recording, okay? And that's essentially partly why they split up, as, you know, particularly from their management as well, because they actually, I think, wanted to write their songs. Okay, they were atrocious though. Well, the songs they wrote, the songs the Bay City Rollers wrote themselves were pretty atrocious. I've got an album of them somewhere. It really is dire. Okay, this is Penny Lane. Okay, this is a first pressing. Okay, um, I don't know, this is the original sleeve. I've just got a paper sleeve here for it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get close enough for you to be able to see, okay? But look, again, there's that sold in the UK text there, okay? And the perimeter text from the mid-70s, uh, mid-60s, sorry, because this is 1967, um, starts out with the Gramophone Company Limited, or the Gramophone Co. Limited, as companies being abbreviated to, okay? Um, but yeah. I do apologise for the drum practice going on. Oh, another ABBA. Uh, this is Dancing Queen and That's Me. Okay, again, on the original first person label. Yellow. ABBA, Super Trooper here. Okay, and the Piper. In the original picture sleeve that it came in, uh, and it's on the blue and yellow. No, uh, it's not. It's a blue, yellow, and sort of ready kind of epic label. There, there are a few designs that they use. <coughs> USA for Africa. If we are the world. This is the stars on forty-five um, doing. ABBA, 
okay? A kind of Dutch combo. I've done a, a, a video on this, actually. And I think I even did a transfer of it as well, so you should find that on YouTube. This is Tears for Fears, Change. I loved Tears for Fears in the early 80s. Um, every kind of teenager, you know, tends to sort of when you're seeking out your identity, man, um, you know, they find bands that really speak to them and sort of speak to their emotions and whatnot. And this is um, you know, Tears for Fears, and particularly the album The Hurting. Um, it it just, you know, spoke volumes to me as a, as a mid-teen, 15, I think I was. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, Change on the Mercury label. B-side um, is called The Conflict. Dexy's Midnight Runners and the Emerald Express. And it is Come and Eileen with the B-side Dubious. I've never played the B-side Dubious, but I've certainly played Come and Eileen to absolute death. Fantastic single, absolutely fantastic. Number one for several centuries. Right, said Fred, Don't Talk, Just Kiss. Brilliant song, backed by the instrumental version because by the late 80s, in fact, even really by the mid 80s, um, bands were uh, and record companies were just getting cheap. You know, don't even bother about writing a, a, a B side for it. We'll just stick an instrumental on and get someone to remix it. This is Tracy Ullman, Sunglasses. Another lovely song. Really, really good. Well crafted. Um, and uh, yeah, brilliant. I think it was written by Kirsty McCall, actually. Let me see if I can find it. It's on, again, the Stiff Records label. Sunglasses, I'm trying to find it. I can't see it. No, it's John D. someone or other. Not Kirsty McColl, although Kirsty McColl, uh, Tracy Ullman did record some of Kirsty McColl's songs. There is actually a best of Tracy Ullman. However, most people will only know two of her singles. Breakaway and Sunglasses. This is uh, YMCA by the British people on Mercury label. Okay. And the B side is called The Women. I think that was intended to make people speculate about their sexuality. Although I, I seem to remember reading on Wikipedia that m most of them, at least, were straight. So there you go. This is God knows what. Ah, oh, it's the Pretenders. Um, it's the pretenders, the wait and stop your sobbing. Okay, again, I did a transfer of this. I know I did a transfer of this, but I can't find it anywhere. I'll have to look in my iTunes library again. Um, I, uh, as my followers will know, I had some trouble with my iTunes library and lost a whole ton of stuff, and that's one of them I lost. Uh, this one, Suzanne Vega, Luca, done a, uh, a transfer of this one as well. Superb, absolutely superb single. It's on the... A and M label, uh, silver A and M. Right, the Elton John band, Philadelphia Freedom. I think this is so knackered that I don't play it. Oh no, no, it's not too bad. What else did I have that was that was knackered? This is Philadelphia Freedom, and on the B side, it's got the John Lennon reunion, um, and uh, yeah, uh, they did. Um, I saw her standing there together okay you could also get that version of I saw her standing there with whatever gets you through the night as well I think the pretenders brass in pocket and swing in London and nervous but shy also on the b-side um, don't know what label that is that's why I didn't tell you the label of the other one because I don't know what it is it's like R or something I have no idea um, 
this is Paul McRae. Ah, uh, oh, Irene Cara, out here on my own. These, these are two songs from Fame. Um, Irene Cara on one side, out here on my own, and uh, Paul McRae. Um, is it okay if I call you mine? That's from the original Fame, not the kids from Fame. The original Fame film, okay, from. 1982, I believe. Uh, Freddie Mercury and Monster Cavalier, Barcelona. That, that is truly knackered. Ryan Adams, Wonderwall. This was truly knackered even when I bought it, but it's a very good version of Wonderwall. So uh, that is on the something label. Not really told. Lost records. Lost something again. It's so tiny, I can't read it. Absolutely tiny. Get your glasses. I've lost them. I can't find them. Right, okay, so now we've got uh, a couple of Beatles singles here. This is uh, Hello, Goodbye, and I'm the Walrus. Now, this is a late 70s um, reissue, okay? The late 70s reissues had these um, sort of green sleeves here. They had a, tend to have a picture on the back. Like that. Uh, this is kind of as a mock-up of the, um, again, mid to uh, late 60s uh, Parlophone kind of uh, sleeves basically. Um, the perimeter text on this uh, starts out with all rights of the producer, I believe. No, it doesn't, I lie, EMI Records Limited. EMI Records Limited and um, there it is. Uh, there is no sold in the UK text there because as I said earlier on, that tended to disappear, okay? so. Uh, You'll know a late 70s Parlophone record by uh, looking for the EMI Limited or EMI Records Limited uh, perimeter text, okay? This one, I believe, is an original. Yes, it is an original. Lady Madonna, okay? 1968, sold in the UK text, just there, okay? And the perimeter text, I'll have to take it out to do that. This costs four pounds. Uh, in the late 80s, starts with, or starts off with the Gramophone Company Limited because anything from about 64 up until 74, 73, 74, something like that, uh, started with um, the Gramophone Company Limited. So that means that even uh, some of the one box and two box uh, labels uh, for, for the Beatles records, the Beatles Parlophone records, um, you know, collectors look for um, like one box EMI. They've got like EMI has like the, 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 uh, the late 60s, 69, in fact, for a very few months, uh, the Parlophone label have one silver box with EMI um, written on it. Okay. Um, they quickly changed that throughout the 70s and much of the 80s to two silver boxes. Okay, but even some of the two silver boxes from the early 70s started out uh, with uh, the gramophone company on the on the perimeter text. And uh, according to uh, you know, some of the research I've done, they're actually very good quality, uh, you know, uh, the ones that start with the gramophone company. So, yeah. This is Cooler Shaker, second sight. On the something label on the no idea label can't tell what label that is at all i'll show you there you go all very psychedelic and we haven't been using any suspicious chemicals lately there you go xanadu this was sent to me by my uh YouTube friend Owen Michael McCafferty. Okay, again, it's had a it's had a transfer on YouTube. Okay, uh, 
all the way from Ohio, actually, he sent this. All the way from Ohio to the UK. Um, it's got full country on the B side, okay? From the film Xanadu. It is brilliant. Lovely film. Again, very fond memories of that one. John Vangelis from about 1981. Yeah, this is uh, I'll Find My Way Home on the Silver Polydor label. ABBA, again, I should organise these singles, shouldn't I, folks? The winner takes it all in the lane. This is a, um, this is probably Holland, Germany, Spain, France, uh, in Europe, or a lot of Europe. Uh, ABBA were on the Polydor label, okay? Uh, because Stig Anderson, their manager, did deals with all these record companies, basically, uh, thinking, oh, you know, uh, we can release their stuff and uh, you know promote them properly okay so that polar music didn't have to have branches all over the all over the world they they got local record companies to release them okay so this is a polydor version of the winner takes it all and elaine okay and again i've i've put, i certainly put elaine up on youtube uh elaine was one of their better b-sides should have been on super trooper instead of on and on and on i believe okay this is um this is an album, okay? This is the an album on uh, on singles. This is the Charlatans up at the lake. It's a brilliant album. Uh, again, it's not been played that much because uh, essentially I'm too lazy to change the records, okay? I ought to buy this on. You, know, you can get it on like an ordinary album, okay? But it's basically three seven-inch singles that have got four tracks on each. Okay, uh, and it's really very good. Uh, released in the early noughties. Okay, I can remember buying Morrissey's. Uh, 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 what's the What's the Morrissey's one that's got "Come Back to Canada" on it? So I bought that one at the same time. Elvis Costello and the Attractions. Oliver's Army. Um, Stunning single. The piano on this was, um, I'm reliably informed, and in fact it's been well documented, I think even Elvis Costello said it himself, uh, was based on the uh, on Benny's piano on Dancing Queen. You know, all those lovely great big Rachmaninoffian sort of chords in, in uh, tenths. Um, and a lovely version of My Funny Valentine on the B-side. This, I think, belonged to my father-in-law, or my ex-father, my, my ex's dad, um, Louis Armstrong and his all-stars, Satch the Trump. I did a transfer for him for that, and I've got the single here. And this, oh goodness, I don't know what year it would have been. It's an export copy by the looks of things as well. On the Philips label, they never put the years on these things in ye olden ye days. So I suspect that this would have even been sort of before 1960, okay? And as I remember, it played very nicely indeed, okay? On the Philips label, it's got Mini Groove 45 written on it. You can just about see that. This is another recent purchase. In fact, we're getting to the end of the pile now, okay? In fact, we, the, actually probably are okay songs I wish I'd sung the first time around this is um, there are two EPs in the series uh, part one and part two this is part one it's very very nice indeed and considering that it is 19 uh, again no we're not told the year but I'm guessing around about 1960 okay on the Brunswick label which are a division of Decca records possibly the budget division uh, mono as singles were up until about 1970 in this country. Um, but yeah, lovely. And you know, considering that it is that old, plays very well. And I bought that for a pound in Oxfam. Brilliant, it's four tracks and uh, I've transferred it and it's lovely. Um, finally, I've got two picture discs. Again, I bought the other day, Halo James. Halo James, a teen band who 
wrote their songs, recorded their songs, produced their songs. They actually had guys in there that could actually write and play music and Christian James could really sing as well. This is Magic Hour, okay, and it's lovely, you know, it, it, it's really nice. It's just got, you know, it, it just doesn't sort of shriek at you of just generic rubbish, you know. Um, you know, they actually tried to make a proper, well-crafted pop song, you know, it's, and it's really good, very... Um, very catchy okay I might transfer this actually I've, I have transferred it I might do I might actually do a YouTube video of this playing um, I'm rather amused by this cover here looks like orgy I would like to have um, and then on the other side you've got a picture of the only album that Halo James ever uh, released uh, called Witness uh, the biggest single from it was called could, could have told you so which is uh, you know, it's a song that just gets better and better with every beat that that that, that plays, particularly the twelve inch, which I used to have but lost. Okay, uh, but yeah, so Halo James, look them up. They were very good. And the very last one I've got here is this is. Can you guess? Can you guess? I, it took me a while to work out what this was, but we have here Tom Bailey on that side, Alana Curry, I believe there, and Joe Leeway there. They are, this is the Thompson Twins, okay, and it is <coughs> Doctor Doctor, which is my favourite Thompson Twins song. Um, I've got a couple of their albums, Quick Step and Sidekick and Into the Gap which this came from, and uh, yeah, uh, this is Nurse Shark, uh, which is the B-side, which is just Doctor Doctor instrumental slowed down, as if it was playing on 33, in fact, I actually had to look and think, I didn't accidentally switch it to uh, 30, 33 by accident, did I? but there you go, um, both of those singles play very well, okay, um, so yeah, that is the end of my singles pile. Okay, I did promise my friend Ashley that I would post up two YouTube videos today. So I think I'm gonna put Halo Jane's Magic Hour on, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, there we go, okay? So uh, nice to be back everyone, and I will speak to you very soon, um, no doubt. <laughs>